Welcome to the Onslow County Museum signature exhibit, The Water and the Wood. I'm Lisa Whitman Grace and I'll be your tour guide today for Tour with Us Tuesdays. Each Tuesday we're going to introduce you to a segment of this exhibit that helps tell the story of this place that we get to all call home, Onslow County. Now, let's begin in the beginning. Oslo County's story, its geologic history, has its foundations about 65 million years ago. Imagine if you were here 65 million years ago, you would have been under about 300 feet of ocean. And swimming in that ocean were all kinds of incredible creatures, from the teeny tiny to the enormous. Now, of course, when you visit a museum, what do you expect to see? dinosaurs. Well, our geologic story doesn't really have a story that includes those great creatures, but it does have all of these wonderful creatures that once populated our ocean. Let's take a peek. So if you'll come with me over here, we're going to begin our story in what's called the Paleocene. That's about 65 million years ago. These are very simple creatures. Creatures like Echinoids. These are sea creatures, shellfish, um, things like the precursor to what we think of uh, sand dollars. We've got scallops and of course the beginnings of sharks. Everybody's favorite. Now the best part about finding these wonderful shark's teeth is that they're not limited to being able to see them here in the museum. You can go to the beach and find a piece of this geologic history of your very own. As we move through the fossil record, the creatures kind of change shape, change size. Everyone's favorite, Carcharodon megalodon, who appears here about 25 million years ago, was an enormous shark that some scientists think could have exceeded 50 feet long. Of course, whale, we had manatee, crocodile, and just take a look at this oyster shell. It is over a foot long. These are all from the Miocene period, again about 25 million years ago. Moving forward through time, about 2 million years ago, we saw a significant change. We went to the Pliocene and then two million years ago, the Pleistocene. Now this Pleistocene is the era of the Ice Age. And here we think about megafauna, land creatures. As we enter that Ice Age, oceans pulled back, freezing into enormous mountains of ice and snow. And this megafauna appeared on the scene so big, covered with fur and layers of fat, so that they could survive these extreme new temperatures. Who do we think of when we think of these megafauna? Well, of course, mastodon, mammoth, and my personal favorite, the 13-foot sloth that lived right here in Onslow County. Now, that ice age lasted until about 20,000 years ago, when Onslow County began to look pretty much like it looks today. If you'll look behind me here, imagine, if you will, journeying to an Onslow County before there were humans calling this place home, when we had tall, tall stands of trees. We had wet, wonderful water in the form of two rivers, the White Oak River and the New River. We also had rich, rich soil. All of these natural resources set the stage for the first people to arrive here to begin calling this place home. Let's take a trip and move forward through time just a little bit. Part two of our tour brings us forward in time to about 14,000 years ago when the first people who arrived here, these first inhabitants of Onslow County first were essentially nomadic hunters and gatherers who came here seasonally. 
hunting uh, big game, including deer, also fishing the waters, and of course gathering oysters and seasonally gathering nuts in the fall and fruits in the springtime and summer. Now, how do we know the story of these first peoples? They certainly did not leave us a written record, but instead we look at the archeological record, the artifacts, the things that they made and changed and shaped. How did they change the landscape, for example? How did they use the natural resources that were here to create the things that they needed for survival? Now, the earliest of these tools would have been implements for hunting. Things like these points here, these projectile points. Much of this stone does not occur here locally, so this tells us that these first peoples traded or came here from other places, making these um, spear points and then later on arrowheads or projectile points for arrows, all from stone. These are the primary resources that they have. This largest um, piece that you see here is actually a blank. This is not a large spearhead. This is not an enormous ax head. This is actually the beginnings of what will become projectile points. We also find things like an atlatl weight. This is for throwing spears and helping kind of serve as extra muscle for that person throwing it. We have ax heads. We have hammer stones, um, and then later on, as we move a little bit further through time to the woodland period, we began seeing Native people's craft objects such as pottery. This is a piece of pottery, a pottery shard or shard uh, made from clay. As you look very closely at these details, you'll see that it has bits and pieces of shell that's been crushed and mixed with the clay in order to temper it so that when it's fired, it is actually stronger. Our clay is not the most strong, so by tempering it with shell or other bits of small pieces of fired clay, it makes it stronger. This would have been the rim, and this would have been just one side of a piece of pottery made, crafted, touched by human hands more than 1,000 years ago. A question we frequently get then is, who were these first peoples? Well, let's take a little look here at what a typical Native American village or settlement might have looked like for some clues. The first thing we find is that the Native Americans here in Eastern North Carolina lived in what we call longhouses. Why, do they, they, why are they called longhouses? Well, because they're long. They would have been about 15, 20, 25 feet long. This would have been shared by an extended family. It is small tree saplings that had been cut down, tied together, and then covered with woven mats. Now, before you build your longhouse, you want to find the perfect place to call home. Is it on the beach? No, not the best place to build a longhouse. Is it in the deep, kind of forested Pocosin? No, the soil is too wet, abundance of wildlife. You want to find that perfect place, and that perfect place is just between the two, situated on the sound, that place where the rivers meet the ocean. In the case of Onslow County, that would be Stump Sound or Bogue Sound. So you build a place to live. Secondly, when you're considering where you're going to call home, you want to look at the availability of resources. So we have forested areas, the maritime forest, that might provide us with um, nuts or berries, any kind of vegetation that we might need. There's abundant wildlife for hunting. And then certainly the sounds provide us with, of course, our Native Americans most favorite resource for food, and that is shellfish, clams and oysters that can be gathered up, steamed in cooking pits um, that have a fire kind of built underneath and on top for steaming them open. And so this is an availability of food waste. Then you want to look at the ability to travel from place to place. Native Americans in Eastern North Carolina had two means of travel, by foot, and then, of course, because we live close to the waterways, canoes. We're going to turn our 
our vantage point here, if you will, and take a look at the museum's sort of signature piece, the jewel in our crown. And this is our 800 year old dugout canoe. This canoe was found in the New River in 1968. It was found at a point called Weir Landing near present day Gum Ranch Road. This canoe is 38 feet long. It is made by, from a cypress tree and it is made in the traditional method of constructing canoes that Native Americans would have used, which is to burn and then scrape. As archeologists examine this artifact, this enormous artifact, we see no signs of metalworking. When we radiocarbon date it, it tells us that this tree was felled 800 years ago. That would be 500 years before the first arrival of any European settlers. So this is a great example of the peoples who lived here using the waterways as transportation and a means for fishing, a means for moving from place to place. As we continue our story of Native Americans, we've talked about housing or shelter. We've talked about food ways. We've talked about crafting tools and of course, transportation. The question always is, Miss Lisa, how do we know this? Well, let's take a little bit of a, a look at how we tell the story of these first peoples. Because we have no written record, we talk about archeology. span Archaeology is that study of early peoples and looking at the material culture, looking at the things that they've made. Oslo County has been studied by archaeologists since about the 1950s. We have records of archaeologists visiting this area, documenting these stories of these first peoples from the state, from East Carolina University. All of these schools of archaeology have visited this place and help us tell this story. Now, we also want to remind people that Native American sites, archeological sites are protected by state law. So we don't want to just go out and dig and dig up these sites. We wanna leave that to the archeologists who can help us tell the story of these first peoples. So what happened? Well, that's still a bit of a mystery, but according to archeologists who have come and studied this area, we think that something happened environmentally that caused these people to leave this area about 500 years ago. That would put us at about 1500, long before European settlers arrived here in Onslow County. But something may have happened to their foodways. What if you can imagine something happened to all those shellfish? Maybe the salinity of the water changed. Maybe the temperature changed. The climate changed in some way. What if there was a bacteria or a viral bloom in the waterways? If your favorite food was gone, would you remain in this area? Well, we're still trying to learn that. And the best part about, the best part about archeology span is that we never completely know all the answers. We just keep learning. And that's what we invite you to do when you visit us here at the Onslow County Museum. We look forward to our next visit when we're gonna take you and tell you the story of early settlement in the 18th century. Thanks as always for joining us here at the Onslow County Museum for Tour With Us Tuesdays.